It's time to look back at the third quarter of 2020 for wine investors. In a second, I will discuss the four main areas for wine investment with Rasmus Nielsen, who is the CEO of Rare Wine Invest. We will start up with Burgundy, move on to Champagne, Bordeaux and rest of the world. Also, we will look at the rest of 2020 as we are already into the fourth quarter. And we will also discuss the new investors portal as we just launched. And finally, you can meet Ole Spil, who is the new commercial director here at Rareline Invest. Welcome. And welcome to you, Rasmus. Thank you. The REI index showed 2.2 up for the third quarter 2020. What should you think about that, Rasmus? Again, I think when we look back to the last time we stand here and, and talk about the, the former quarters, uh, the third quarter really is starting to show strength and stability in the market. Uh, the activity has been going up quite strongly in the past three months and now when we look into the fourth quarter we're actually looking into probably the biggest quarter for our company's trading uh, company ever. So it's uh, really starting to get more and more positive. And we have seen customers moving from drinking wine in restaurants to drinking wines at home. So the consumption is still there and it's still good and we see the consumption just changing a little bit. Thank you, Rasmus. And we go straight to Burgundy. Yeah. Uh, Burgundy has shown some of the greatest uh, increases in price uh, over the past 10 years. Yeah. But uh, in the first quarter of 2020, Burgundy was hit hard by the COVID-19 crisis. But this quarter, the third quarter of 2020, Burgundy is up again by 1.3%. Is Burgundy back on track now? I think Burgundy is back on track, yes. I see primarily the what happened in the first quarter was that the market freeze. There wasn't any uh, liquidity in the market, so the prices dropped. What we're seeing now is that the uh, activity again is coming back into the market. And we see a lot of private collectors uh, snatching up these cases now as they want them in the collections. And collections are going from the a lot of, again, from the, a lot of the restaurants into private hands now. So we see uh, consumption just moving uh, onto other places. I think Burgundy is back on track. We will not see the same uh, price increases that we saw in 17 and 18, but I think we'll see stable uh, increases. We will see uh, stable uh, returns. And we'll s what is very important is that there's a lot of good consumption in Burgundy at the moment. And we are heading to Champagne. Champagne was already back in the second quarter of 2020 with uh, price increases. And now here in the third quarter, Champagne is up by 4.5%. Yeah. Rasmus, what are some of the special things that make Champagne rise in price during a time like this? Again, what's the most important thing for an investment in wine is consumption. Champagne is in every dinner you have. So if, if it's either in the restaurant or at home, you always drink champagne. That's number one. Number two, there's, there haven't been any uh, tariffs in the, from the States. So we're really seeing people moving towards champagne and hopefully it will stay like that, even though the, 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 the tariff at some point may disappear. I think with uh, champagne, especially things like these, are gonna be strong in the coming years. At the moment, we see an oil production in Champagne, yes. and uh, I think this, we are not worried about that because it's only the, the lower price, the, the smaller productions or the smaller wines. So the big brands, they will be stable and we'll see a price increase in the future. We are 100% sure. Thanks. And on the table we have here is Jacques Selos. What's so special about that bottle, Rasmus? Uh, Silas is around 6,000 bottles, so 6,000 bottles for the whole world. Of course, this is an interesting uh, investment to, to have a look at. And, and he has a very special uh, uh, way of producing with a high oxidation. So it's a very special champagne and it's uh, have special tastes and it's uh, really unique to, to own these. So it's a, it's a must have for most champagne collectors in the world. Bordeaux is up 2.4% for the third quarter of 2020. Rasmus, how can that be? I think it's, a, it's, it's natural after the Premier campaign this year was a really good success for Chateaus. They, were, they really managed to catch the eye of the world this year and the focus was back on Bordeaux after several years where it had been in the shadow. Um, 
which we are not still uh, we're still not that happy in investing in Bordeaux. Uh, on the especially on the left bank, we see overproduction. We like it when they have, for example, we have the Chateau Lafitte Rochelle this year have a special label with a 150 anniversary on the 2018. Yes, yes. But as a generally left bank, we don't like as an investment. On the right bank, there's a few chateaus: the Chateau La Fleur, Chateau Le Pang, and Chateau Petrus. And these are the three interesting wines to invest in in Bordeaux, in my opinion. So it's too early to conclude that Bordeaux is back as an investment. It is. I will say, can they next year still make this uh, low prices on the on premier or even lower? We, I think it will be a great success again. Rest of the world is the uh, final category that we look into. And rest of the world contains of Italian wine, Spanish wine, American wine, overseas wine and also whiskey. And rest of the world is up by 0.2% for the third quarter of 2020. Rasmus, can you talk us through uh, some of the main areas in the rest of the world? Let's start with Italy. It's, uh, at the moment there's really a movement going towards Italian wines. Uh, first of all, I think that when there's no tariffs on the wines, it helps consumers go from classical French wines over to either Barolo or Tuscany wines. Especially Tuscany wines, we've seen some prices going up quite crazy in the, in the third quarter. And uh, for example, Solaya. And all of these brands, Solaya, Mesetto, Tignanello, so Sassicaia and Onolaya are really brands we see a bright future in. But furthermore, there's a lot of sub-brands uh, just underneath with high quality, just not as known, where we see a lot of potential in the coming years. So we are really, really happy about Tuscany and furthermore we have been doing a special case on Barolo 2016, maybe one of the biggest vintages ever from Barolo and whenever we see something interesting we will come and bring it to you, to you guys as well uh, because I think these will be hallmark vintages. 16 uh, Tuscany and 16 Barolo are the things to buy right now. Perfect, Rasmus, that was Italy. If we move on to American wine, for instance, yep. how is it for the American wines in the third quarter of 20? We have. This year it's just been quite devastating in the States because we had uh, the huge fires in the, in the Napa uh, County. The wildfires. Yeah, the wildfires. And for investments, we can see the prices and the demand actually had gone up in the back vintages because people are afraid of what's coming in, in the future. And we see, I see, we see a trend right now going to much more lighter wines and much more Bordeaux-like wines in the Upper Valley, and that's really, really interesting. Uh, but we like the super brands: the Harlan, the Screaming Eagle, the Hundred Acre, uh, the Spotwoods, and uh, for example, uh, Scarecrow. It's uh, interesting wines that we follow all the time, and whenever we have something really of interest, we'll we'll put it put it into the market for sure. And what about whiskey? Whiskey is really interesting at the moment because as the super super expensive wines are going flat, uh, falling a little, while the the brands at a for example 500 to 3,000 euros, 4,000 euros are really performing really really strong at the moment. So I see again I think what's most important for both a whiskey investment or wine investment is consumption. It is that the the wine or whiskies get drunk. And I, I'm afraid that the consumption on the super, super expensive whiskies haven't been there in the past years. So I think these super expensive will continue to, to, to decline a little, while we'll see a steady growth on the more inexpensive whiskies, for sure. Thank you very much. We are now uh, one third into the fourth quarter of 2020, and even though it is hard to predict the future, Rasmus, what are we looking into for the fourth quarter? How was fourth quarter started? What we see right now in the world is everything is closing down again, especially in Europe. And that said, we are, as a trading company, uh, not our investment company, uh, really, really happy with what we've been seeing. October was the biggest month we ever had turnover wise in our company history and I think we'll see a fourth quarter really really strong on prices demand are there again I think we see demand changing from uh, restaurants uh, to more private consumers that drink at home have parties at home and are able to spend a little more money on wine when at home than 
at the restaurant. So I think we'll see uh, good, good activity in the market and uh, strong demand. Furthermore, if you are lucky and you're uh, and you're already at the, there's some possibility to make some really really good deals. So it's a matter of being there all the time and being proactive. A lot of things is happening out there. Also here at Rarewind Invests, we just launched a new investor platform. And on that platform, you can access your quarterly report for the third quarter, but also some of your numbers for the lifetime value of your wine portfolio. And you can actually access the platform through a new app on your mobile phone, or you can go to a tablet or even your desktop computer. But Rasmus, what can we expect from the new platform in the future? I think us as a company is getting more and more driven by data. And what we want to really give our investors in the future is more and more transparency and more and more a depth of the market to, to understand why wine investment is such an interesting thing. So I expect a lot of, of things from this app in the future and I think we will be, we will both be able to sell through this app at some point and buy through this app at some point. Uh, so a lot of things will be uh, possible. It's just a matter of uh, the, the right facilities and really to get it into the market right now. And it's still early days for the app, but it's out there already and you can as an investor log in and access your wine portfolio. Also in new things here at Rare Wine Invest, Rune Spil started last week as new commercial director. You can meet Rune in a second, but first ask us, what can wine investors expect from the acquisition of Rune Spil? As with the wine platform we just talked about, we want to take wine investment to a new level. I think Rona's priorities will be a better after sales service, it will be better uh, events both online and offline and I see added value will be some of the first priorities that Rona can give to our investors in the future. Thank you Rasmus for taking us through uh, the third quarter of 2020 and now it's time to meet Rona Spil. And now I'm here with Rona Spil, the new commercial director here at Railwine Invest. And I want to tell the viewers a little bit more about your background. Yeah, my background last, and first of all, thank you for having me. Um, my background is uh, from being a professional athlete, and over the last years I have been CEO for a technology company uh, working in the healthcare industry, focusing a lot about customer experience and a lot about bringing in data and using that data. Thank you, Ole. And also, uh, can you tell the viewers a little bit more about your plans for the future? What can the wine investors expect? The main focus will be customer experience about being an investor at Where Wine Invest. We want to focus on bringing in data, bringing in transparency when you invest in wine. So that will definitely be the, the huge focus of, uh, of our platform. You just landed here, Ole, uh, and already we launched a new uh, investors platform. What can we expect of the investors platform in the future? We want to add value to our investors. We want to make sure that Where Wine Invest platform is the best platform in the world. And we want to make sure that all our current customers and future customers uh, have the transparency in what we do and how uh, the growth of, of Ryan is. Thank you, Rune, and thanks a lot to you. That's all for the third quarter of 2020. We will be back after the fourth quarter. Also, go to ramaninvest.com and find Rune and some of all the colleagues. Also, you can follow us on social media platforms and you can subscribe to our newsletter. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.